This is a continuation of a video previously where you created a class called person. You created some properties and then we had a function. I've deleted some of the code that's in there. So now we're going to learn how can we write methods for a class. Now remember a class is just a template or a mold to make objects. The properties or attributes are describing the object. They're all the things that describe a person. A method is like a function except that it lives in the class. Here's a function. It does work but it doesn't live inside of a class. A method will live in a class. Now usually when I write my methods for my classes for almost all of my properties that I make I will create what they call getters and setters. Not needed, but it's just standard, strictly typed language programming. Um, you don't have to do this because variables are all public by default, and so you can just use the variable name. But maybe we wanted to do something different with these variables. Instead of just returning the attribute values, when we came down here, we could create a variable. Old person equals new person. That creates the new object. And in order to set a value for first name, you would just say the object dot first name equals some value. And let's go ahead and do that for the other one, the other attribute we want to work with. And then let's say we want to print off the following. We want to say alert, when I say print off, display, and I want to do the last name, comma, space, first name. So I would have to type in o person dot last name concatenated with the comma space and then the o person dot first name. And that's great. We could do that. But instead of having to write this code that works with the person object, maybe instead we could actually package that up as a method in the class because maybe we'll call that code more than once. And so what we could do is we could create a method name. So to create a method, it's like doing a function. But you don't have to use the word function anymore. You're just going to use the name, a descriptive name of what it does. So let's say that we wanted to return this option where it's the last name, comma, space, first name. So I'd come over here and we'll just say get full name, parenthesis, parenthesis. So this is now the name of my method function. That's the name of my method in the class. And if anybody ever calls that, I want to say return. I'm going to use the keyword this. This refers to an object's attribute. This dot first name, oh, I'm sorry, we want last name. This dot last name concatenated with comma space concatenated with this dot first name. I also like to use parentheses to clean things up a little. And so this now says if you ever call this method, it's going to return or give back the last name concatenated with that and the first name. So over here, instead of saying all of that we could say o person dot get full name parenthesis parenthesis remember it's a function or a method and so we have to use our parentheses you don't have to add the spaces I did that for readability and this is how you could write a method then it simply says this does work what does it do it returns the last name concatenated with that let's go ahead and run that and see if it works so Come to here and run that. Click me, mouse, comma, space, Mickey. So now you've seen you can actually write a method in your class. I could write any method I want. Let's say that I wanted to write a method that returns the first letter of the last name. Get first letter return spelled correctly this dot 
And if I wanted to do a substring of it, this dot last name dot. And if we wanted a substring, we would have to create the method or call the right method to pull the substring off of that variable. And instead of using that substring, we could just say char at. We could have done a substring on it. And we don't really need all these extra parentheses. But we could now say this dot last name dot char at position zero. And this would return the first character from that property value. And then down here I just said alert o person dot get first letter. Let's run that and see if it works. So at first we should see mouse Mickey and then we should see the letter M. So these methods are just like functions, it's just that they are defined within the class. What if I received a value and I wanted to change something? I could do something like this. I could say set first name s input. In fact, let's let's do this. Instead of set first name, let's do set full name. And let's give it a variable s first, comma, s last. And then we're going to say this dot first name is equal to s first. And this dot last name is equal to s last. So this method receives two parameters, and then we assign those parameters to the properties. Down here, in order to run that, I could now do something like this. I could say operson dot set full name Mickey comma mouse. This would then call this method, pass Mickey into there, mouse into there, assign Mickey to the first name, assign mouse to last name, and then we print it out. Let's try that and see if it works. And we'll go ahead and control shift I so you can watch this in the debugger. Let's set a breakpoint right here when we run it. Click me. Let's go ahead and step into that method. Mickey, mouse. Mickey gets assigned to first name. Mouse gets assigned to last name. So that when we come back to old person, continue. And old person now has Mickey and Mouse in the, in the attributes. I'll go ahead and run that. There's Mickey and Mouse, and there's the M again from our previous call. So what's a method? A method is just a function, but we don't say the word function. A method lives in the class. A method does work. Like a function, a method can return one value. Like a function, a method can receive parameters or arguments and use those inside of the method. Now, how do you know what methods to write? You look at your class and you try to figure out what type of work will I need to do on this class. One thing that I've done, we don't have to do it though, is we could write what they call getters and setters. For instance, I could say get first name, return this dot uh, first name. We could create a setter, and a setter would be set first name, receives a parameter, oops, sorry about that, receives a parameter, and then we could say this dot first name equals the parameter. And we do this in a lot of other web development languages where we write getters and setters. And that's because we have scope with our properties. Currently the scope of these properties are public, meaning anybody can access them and use them. This is how you write methods. They do work. So anytime you need to do work in a class, create a method.